What is going on, everybody? You are listening to Jumpmaster, the number one Apex Legends podcast brought to you by OKBeast.com. I'm your Jumpmaster today, Alex Van Aken, and joining me this week is my squad mate. We've got Andrew Taylor. What is going on, Andrew? Not a whole lot, as you probably are already in the same boat as me. Not a whole lot. <laughs> I thought it would have been the opposite, dude. The world's on fire. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, in terms of our quarantine that we've been doing for almost two uh, weeks yes. now. But H- how you do- how you dealing with that? Because I'm, I'm starting to go uh, a little um, yeah. crazy over here. Yeah, there was a, there was a moment there about a couple weeks ago where it was official that I was going to be working from home indefinitely, where I was like, okay, this, this might be nice, you know, wake you know, wake up maybe a half an hour before work and yeah. sleep in a little bit. And now it's like, it's all the days are meshing together already. It's only been two weeks. That's why I play Animal Crossing. Yeah. I log in. It tells me what day it is. I'm like, okay, yeah, I can keep going. Yeah. It, I, look, I do that every morning me. too. I've been playing Animal Crossing every morning before uh, I yeah. have my meeting with my coworkers. But have you been playing much Apex Legends? Because I got to be honest with the listeners. I haven't, I haven't been. I don't know what's up. Yeah, I mean, Warzone dropped here, what was it, two or three weeks ago? Yeah, um, yeah. We tried that out. I know that you're probably more of a fan than I am. I personally do not like Warzone, like, almost it, at it all. It kind of is great. As a Battle Royale experience, it's kind of like, it was really exciting at first. Mm. And they had some new stuff. And I actually, I think there's some stuff in Call of Duty Warzone that I think would be, I'd love to see, like, the, the Apex Legends version of it. Yeah. Um, like the gulag in Warzone. I like that, yeah. That like when you die, people haven't if people Apex Legends fans haven't played uh Warzone yet, it's free. It's the Call of Duty Battle Royale, but essentially when you die in that game the first time, you get sent to prison and it like opens this cutscene and you're getting dragged into this gulag and then you have to a one v one another player in order to get out of um to get out of prison and get a respawn, a yeah. free respawn. Uh, and then you drop back into the sky and, and land on your team if you if you win. And if you don't win, then your team has to they collect cash on the ground. Um, and it's similar to Apex where like you're opening up crates and you're like you're picking up armor, you're picking up health, that kind of stuff. And then you also pick up cash in Warzone. Yeah. And you can use that to buy equipment and like kill streaks and stuff. And you also use that to buy back your teammates if they die. Yeah. I don't like that part of the system. I think Apex is a way better. Where like you just pick up their their death cards and and get to a respawn beacon and you're good. Mm-hmm. You don't have to worry about like collecting cash because I feel like in in Warzone it's like you can be a great player but you just like the RNG just screws you. The the respawns are directly tied to RNG. Mm-hmm. I feel like and especially like it, even in the Gulag like it's a one v one but it's randomized weapons um, yeah. you get and so like each player gets the same weapon but it's just it's always it's up to chance and then if you do not get if you do not win your 1v1 in the gulag, then you have to wait for your teammates to find enough cash to buy you in. Yeah. And sometimes you're waiting there for 15 minutes. So like, and, and as far as that, I don't want Apex to implement anything like that uh, because I think respawns should be tied to like skill and like being able to rotate properly and, you know, that kind of thing versus yeah. like, oh, we got enough cash. Let's do it. You know, I, I don't like that. But I do like I love if like Apex was like. You die like, and maybe this is I don't think this needs to be in the main mode, but like maybe a fun separate mode like where you, where you die and you spawn into like Thunderdome. I've, all, I've said this like listeners know I've said this time and time again. I've always wanted Thunderdome to be like a proper arena. Yeah. Uh, and they could do a mode where like you die and you get spawned into like the Thunderdome and it's like an actual arena this time. And if one of you want another player, that'd be fun. Yeah. But yeah. Other than that, like, I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of cooling off on, on Warzone altogether. Yeah. It, uh, to me, a lot of that is the same issues I have are the same issues that I have with it. And I think another thing that really bothers me is that people are cheesing the system where and it's obviously not against the rules at all whatsoever. It's just more of a frustration for someone like myself. But people are like camping those buy stations and just waiting for people to go over there and then they just snipe them. Or people are camping in buildings waiting for you to run in there and then they'll just kill you. Personally, the sound of the footsteps, and I know Call of Duty players, I know that dead silence is a thing and I know that Warzone, you're able to have dead silence on. 
Yeah, yeah. But I feel like overall the footsteps, even if you aren't, if, if you're not using dead science, I feel like it's really bad. And yeah. I always, I, I used to complain a little bit about Apex's footsteps because sometimes they would either cut in and out or... I feel like that's been smoothed over yeah, now. Yeah, it's definitely been improved on, but this is... <laughs> This is bad. Like it's taking you back to the early Apex days. Yeah. And audio glitches and all that fun stuff. Yeah. It's it's rough. But you know, there's room for improvement for it and maybe there's a possibility I go back and try it again, but I think I'm I'm done with Warzone. Like it's not been a great experience for me. But there are cool ideas in there and I think everyone's trying different stuff out for sure. Um, yeah, I one of one do. of the things that I feel like Apex could implement. So they have this system in, and I'm not saying every battle royale needs to copy the other battle royale, but there's interesting ideas there that you know I think could be played with. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, and that's why I like talking about this kind of stuff. There's also one other thing which is not a one to one. Like Apex couldn't do it from the start, but follow me, follow me on this road, Andrew. Sure. There's the loadout drops in Call of Duty. Where I think it's like, it's like an asinine amount of cash that you have to collect, and you can call one in. And there's random drops around mm-hmm. the map. Um, it's essentially a random loot drop that falls, or like a random loot crate. Inside though, is a predetermined loadout that you have chosen. In Call of Duty, it's like you have like all of your loadouts that you use in the main modes available, and you can pick from that, and you get all your weapons, all that stuff. It'd be awesome in Apex if they had like this. Like your preferred loadout, it's like, okay, um, my favorite weapon is the R301. And then I always like to have um, like a peacekeeper on my offhand if I'm playing on Kings Canyon and have like have like a preferred loadout or something that are like favorite weapons. You know, maybe you could do it in the menus like you star like your favorite weapons or something. Mm-hmm. And then there's a new type of um, care package drop. So you've got your lifeline care package. You've got the random legendary care package and then maybe you have a loadout care package that could drop that has like your favorite weapons in it. And maybe they're not all like all the way. Like, I don't think they should be all like fully loaded out, but maybe they all have like, they at least have like all white attachments or maybe blues, you know, depending on how late in the game you are. Yeah. And then you, that then you like, let's say you have like a really trash hand. If you're lucky enough to get one of those, let's say it's like one or two that drop on the entire map. Um, and you get your loadout, then like, I don't know. I think that could be a fun thing to play with. And maybe that's just like, yeah, that could I don't know. Be really I don't think it's a separate mode. I feel like that have to be an addition to the main game. And I don't know if yeah. it can be balanced in that in a, in a good way, but I like that idea. And I know Apex has kind of been experimenting with uh, changing up the loot tables, like with um, oh, what was that game mode we were talking about last episode? It was in the limited time event. Everything was the same. All the loot was the oh, same. Uh, yeah, deja vu or de- deja loot. Deja, deja loot. loot. Yeah, they were kind of experiment- experimenting with the loot tables um, in that one. But I don't know. I'd love to see like and like the, the Evo shields. Like they've been yeah. experimenting with those. Like why not try out something yeah. for like two weeks? See if it works. You know what I mean? You know, shout out but, to shout out to Call of Duty and Warzone and they. I mean, just right off the bat, they gave you the option if like a couple days after it launched, but they gave you the option to play solos. And I don't yeah, think yeah. it's I don't think it's like a limited type of thing. I think it's just it's not. like it's there. And yeah. I know a lot of us Apex players have been wanting that back ever since that Iron Crown event. But for some reason, maybe you know, respawn is just a little bit wary about splitting the pay- player base. But honestly, like, yeah, if you can give us a solos mode, I think a lot of people would be really, really happy about it. And I think that would go a long way. Yeah. With- and I'm sure it's kind of put some pressure on them with Warzone doing it. I think so, yeah. And I just, it like, I don't need to have duos. I really don't. Like, I'm totally fine with, say, like, me and you playing together and we have to play with a random person. Like, that's fine. Yeah. Like, I'm not yeah. going to complain about that. But if I have the option to play by myself when there's none of my friends who I want to play with are online, then I can just yeah. play solos. And you're still improving on your gameplay that way as well. So yeah. it's just like, I don't know. I Obviously, I, I wish I was a fly on the wall in the room when it comes to these kinds of decisions for modes yeah. that are going to be cycling in and out of the game. But um, yeah, it's it's a it's a bummer for me to to not have that option to play solos. But Call of Duty has it just like right off the bat. But I, I haven't even tried it, to be honest, like solos in Call of Duty. But I'm sure there's the same frustrations I have with playing squads in Warzone where 
people are camping by stations and people are camping in buildings and all of that. And like people have done that before in Apex, but I feel like seems a little more severe. I, also, we haven't talked about this, and I'm sorry yeah. to cut you off. Oh no, you're good. 150 players. Like we've talked about in Apex Legends, like Apex is 60, and we've always talked about, oh, wouldn't it be great if there was more? And there was, you know, 100 people in Apex. Yeah. I feel like I'm kind of coming to the terms that like I I don't want that anymore. Like that's probably uh, Call not a of good Duty idea. is like, oh, you like a hundred players? Let's bring it to one fifty. Yeah, it, it's off. It's it's way too many people. The matches last like forty five minutes. Like if you're in in game, it's and then the fact that there's a hundred and fifty people, half of those people can be respawned in in the gulag, and then the other like and then on top of that players can be bought back in from their teammates it's way too much like i've i was playing yeah. that and it made me appreciate apex's 60 players way more i, I yeah. feel like apex has just like found the number like yeah and i i don't know what it, like i don't know like what 60 versus 100 would look like in apex but i feel like the maps are very specifically tailored and i'm like now i'm like okay never mind i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna shut up now like you guys do you. Uh, I like Apex. <laughs> like it feels balanced. Call of Duty feels woof. Yeah, but. it's just it's it's a lot, and I I don't even know if I've I feel like I'd remember this, but I don't even think I've won a Warzone game. It's just because there's so many people. There's so won two. many people. There is, yeah. It's it's a lot, but so. But yeah, so that's kind of what what we've been what has been on the mind. Uh, of course, Jump Master is a bi-weekly Apex Legends podcast. Each episode, join us as we discuss the latest news, tips, tricks, and experiences as we jump into the Apex games. This is episode thirty-four. It's going to be a short one, actually. Um, this this coronavirus COVID nineteen has thrown a wrench into all of our schedules, but we did want to get a conversation up for everybody. It's going to be a lot shorter than usual. We're recording this over Andrew's lunch break. So we're going to have to go in a few minutes probably. Um, but I did want to, we got some, a couple news items I wanted to cover. First one. This is, this is very exciting. Uh, this is over from uh, Dick Serto, uh, And the author is Andy Williams. A uh, headline reads apex legends leak reveals new weapon ammo type coming soon. Um, this is from the apex legends leaker Kral Rindo. Um, they've uncovered a new weapon type, uh, explosive ammo. Ooh. So let's get into this real quick. Um, the article reads, thanks to leaker Kral Rindo. It doesn't look like fans will have to wait too long before the game's meta is shaken up once again. Uh, after unveiling a number of voice lines and in-game quips for eight unreleased weapons, the leaker has hinted that a new weapon ammo types are coming soon. Explosive ammo is set to join the five existing types of ammunition in the Apex games behind the recently added sniper ammo type used for the likes of the Sentinel and Longbow DMR. Correlating the leaked voice lines for the unreleased weapons, it appears that the explosive ammo could be used for the EM4 Cold War grenade launcher. That's what I said like yeah. months ago. Yeah. Uh, the Archer Heavy Rocket and the R6P Softball AAGL, respectively. That's the, um, I think that's another rocket launcher. They have to trigger? I can't remember. Um, each of these are heavy duty weapons plucked from the Titanfall universe, designed to work as anti Titan measures. Bear in mind that Respawn may decide to tweak each of the weapons to suit the needs of the Apex games, i.e., anti Titan measures aren't necessarily required in Apex Legends. Uh, of course, it's worth noting that leaks to such uh, as this must be taken with a pinch of salt. Uh, for context, Respawn recently admitted that they included a trail of false breadcrumbs in the game's files to, d- to misdirect data miners into false pretenses. Hmm. Although a completely overhauled weapon set would certainly shake up the current meta considerably. I don't think this is too much of a stretch. We've talked about explosive ammo types on the or explosive weapons in general on this show before. And the fact that, you know, that is kind of a blind spot in Apex Legends current roster of weapons. Uh, it would be like we, we talked about this before. You'd have to approach it with some sensitivity. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, you can't just like throw in a rocket launcher and be like, have fun. But it does seem like that is an obvious, you know, we're talking about FPS games, talking about battle royale games. That seems like an obvious, I guess, like I said, blind spot. What do you think, Andrew? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's it's all interesting to me where does it scare you? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, it does. <laughs> I guess. There's really not much for me to say at this point because I don't really know like sure. a whole lot. But yeah, that is kind of concerning. <laughs> I, it's so easy to mess up the balance because um, yeah. I feel like the meta right now is is pretty good. It's at a good spot. I feel like yeah, and so adding something like that in could 
be an issue. Uh, do you think maybe they would play test something like, oh, let's do a limited time event with these things? Yeah, and oh, see, for sure. Like, okay, let's test this out, see what it's like, and then then we can make the decision on whether or not we want it to be fully implemented into the game. Yeah, I th- I was kind of reading the room on the Evo Shield thing. Mm-hmm. And I think a lot of people really appreciate the fact, like the transparency behind it. Hey, we're trying this out. If you like it, let us know. If you don't, let us know, and we'll go from there. I think that's like a great place to be at and but like with a developer and a community i think that's an awesome place to be where the devs can are feel the freedom to experiment with the game and they have the the their the channels open to properly listen to yeah. people's feedback um and so i wouldn't be opposed to i i think evo shields are a lot easier to swallow than rocket launchers yeah. like evo shields were like a cool twist on something that we already have in the game and it kind of fulfills a play style that yeah. people have been wanting to have more incentive to play as aggressively being like hey we got a big old rocket launcher like yeah i know that that would bring that would make people a little weary but i think if they approach it in the same way like no harm no foul right yeah. like and like <laughs> so like this has been a one of my issues with Warzone too is like everyone is running RPGs. Yeah. And it's like it's a bit much. So maybe maybe they see that and they see how people are using it in Warzone and maybe they reconsider or like change it up a little bit. Like there's things that you can change about a weapon, like it's rate of fire or like yeah you know the proximity of like how much damage these gr- grenades are going to cause depending on how close you are to where they land or you know mm-hmm. little things like that i mean rpg is like it is a it is a missile <laughs> shooting right at you like there's i no would much rather have a grenade it. launcher yeah like i would much rather have a grenade launcher where it's like i can kind of be a, a little bit more you know st- strategic about where i'm going to be you know tossing grenades and like try to pinch people off or whatever but yeah i would also love a weapon that would shoot that would shoot down like bouncing bettys but but yeah so our next news story um comes from dexerto again same writer um this is gonna be the last news story of the day but it's interesting i know there's a lot of titanfall 2 fans in the audience there is there has been a titanfall 2 character spotted in the leaked apex legends cosmetics one skin comes from the same data minor crowd rindo and their article reads um respawn are constantly providing fans with fresh new cosmetics to sport during the apex games whether that be through weapon or character skins more recently weapon charms have been all the rage in apex legends with the bobblehead charms the most sought after so devoted fans will be delighted to know that a series of character charms have been leaked which perhaps hints at things to come in season five and onwards um, Crown Rendo, the data miner behind the leak of the uh, aforementioned voice lines, has unveiled a host of weapon charms that were sitting in the game files. There are a variety of trinkets on show, from miscellaneous charms to bobblehead charms, including seasons four, Season 4's uh, debut, Revenant. Amid the plethora of charms is a character who has never been seen before in the Apex games, although those familiar with the Titanfall 2 universe will know of Ash. The character is uh, conspicuously sitting between the Lifeline and Bloodhound bobblehead charms in the top right corner, and a comparison of this weapon charm to Ash in Titanfall 2 is an almost exact match. So who is Ash? Ash is a simulcrum, just like Hammond Robotics' synthetic nightmare Revenant, uh, uh, unlike Revenant, Ash was formed by Vincent Dynamics following the Battle of Typhoon and Titanfall 2. What ties Ash and Apex Legends existing plot is that before becoming a simulcrum, Ash served as one of uh, Cuban Bliss's lieutenants in Apex Predators. Um, Blisk has an, and sorry, I'm, uh, there's like ads on the screen. Uh, <laughs> Blisk has an extensive lore that runs through the veins of apex legends. Aside from being a ruthless merc- mercenary, Blisk is the founder of the apex games and is said to be the brains behind the syndicate, the organization moderating the apex games and who crypto has locked horns with in the past. Alongside his extensive lore, Blisk's full ability set has previously been leaked by data miners, therefore hinting that Respawn fully intends to introduce him into the Apex Legends universe as a playable character in the future. 
So what does this mean? Well, Ash is the perfect bridge between Revenant and Blisk, which could tie into a plot that has been bubbling under the surface since the introduction of the Planet Harvester. Uh, we know that Hammond Robotics is using the Harvester to, to gather precious metals from the core of World's Edge, so it's quite possible that Ash will enter the Apex Games to aid Revenant's thirst for vengeance in a bid to ruin the organization's bid to extract materials, simultaneously ruining Blisk's grand plan. So this is pretty interesting, uh, yeah. especially considering low Boba was is like pretty heavily rumored um, and teased by by respawn themselves, mm. um, but definitely definitely food for thought. What are your thoughts, Andrew? Uh, this is cool. <laughs> I like the lore. I like. Try- are you a big Titanfall two fan? I oh, mean, you played the I multiplayer. I'm a huge Titanfall two fan. I'm not like basically the thing that stood out for me in Titanfall two was the campaign. The campaign was really really fun and really really easy to digest. And And was Ash a part of that? Because I didn't play. Yeah, she was like one of the bounty, well, not bounty hunters, but like one of the lieutenants of Blisk who was like trying to kill you throughout the whole game. And like, it's like she was a boss battle. So, okay. Yeah, I I, I do love Titanfall 2. So I would love to see this. And, And something maybe that could be potentially a limited time event is maybe have like Heroes of the Past or something like that where it's like titanfall characters from both games both good and bad characters that you can try out for like two weeks or something like that like a completely new i don't know set of characters maybe just like skins obviously you know making a brand new character for an event is way too much work so but i would love to see some sort of implementation of like those past characters to like come back and be an apex legends in some way shape or form but yeah, no, this is exciting. And I know that Loba was, you know, teased in the Revenant launch trailer, but, you know, they kind of, Revenant was teased back in Halloween, and then we got a another character after him, Crypto, or after that event, Crypto, and it's like, it doesn't really matter when they come out, they don't have to come out simultaneously, but like, I'm, I'm interested to see how they're shifting things around and, and what they have in their roadmap for what characters are coming next, so... Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's all really Do exciting. you remember like what her boss battle was like? I don't remember. I only beat that campaign once, but I actually recently bought Titanfall 2 on a sale for PlayStation Network and it was like it's like $5 and like I was like, yeah, I'll buy the game again. Like it's $5 because I remember just I I had fallen like other games had come and I had fallen off of Titanfall 2 in the multiplayer and so I had traded the game in, but seeing that it was $5 on PSN, you can't really beat that price. So yeah, I don't remember the boss battle. I There was like one specific boss battle that I remember where it's it's not very good. So And I don't think it was hers. It was like this huge like red uh, titan that you had to fight. And I think it was like one of the very first ones that you had to fight. But yeah, interesting to see them possibly start implementing characters from from the Titanfall games and... I don't know how that's all going to work. Yeah, it could be like that was a scrapped character as well. You never know. Yeah. But uh, interesting for sure. But uh, like I said, this is going to be a shorter episode. I think that's probably going to do it actually for this week. I know we, we've got to this COVID-19 stuff. I hope everybody's staying safe out there. Yeah. Self, self social distancing, all that fun stuff. So we can flatten the curve and do our part. Yeah. Um, and hopefully, you know, in a couple of months, this stuff will, will be over or yeah. the worst of it will be over. Um, but it's been an interesting time. Uh, I hope everybody's been playing games to distract themselves. We've mm. been playing. I've been playing a lot of Animal Crossing uh, and other games like that to to just to just relax. Just, and I think that's probably why yeah. I haven't played as much Apex. Is that is definitely like a more of a stressful experience, and I'm trying to just zen right now. <laughs> I get that. Um, but yeah, so I, I hope everybody's having fun out there playing games and and is staying safe. And for those of you who can't stay home, we appreciate um, you know those essential workers. We appreciate your your service and uh, helping everybody uh, else be able to stay home. So yeah. um, stay safe out there, everybody. Don't forget you can follow Andrew on Twitter at Papa Drew bear. You can follow me on Twitter or Instagram at it's Van Aken uh, review, subscribe to the show on iTunes. I'm actually going to pull up. We had some reviews. I'll read out before we, before yeah. we get out of here. Um, and then uh, of course, new episodes of this show come out uh, every other Friday and the OKB's podcast is our flagship show over at OKB. So that comes out every Monday. Um, and uh, we've had some really good episodes recently. I know a lot of people have gone and checked those out and left uh, reviews. And we, we thank you for that. Uh, I'm glad that, you know, you jump master listeners find value in that show as well. It's our general gaming show, general gaming chat. Uh, so it's a good time. Uh, let's get into some of these reviews real quick. 
Uh, this first one comes from Tyken009, five stars, binge listening. Uh, Tyken says, I wanted to say that I just discovered this podcast last week and I've been binging it like crazy. It is fun to listen to when the game first came out and all the things we complained about and how many changes the game has gone through. That's, <laughs> man, that's very true. Uh, the flow of the show is amazing. You guys do a great job. Keep it up. Thanks, Tyken from Canada. Appreciate that, Tyken. We really yeah. appreciate uh, that, that nice review. We really appreciate that. Um, next review, and I we might have uh, read this one off before, but if not, if you like Apex Legends, this podcast is for you. Five stars from Not Ever Motion. Uh, I just started listening to today, and I'm hooked. I've been playing Apex since release day, and I played a bit of the. I played a lot of both Titanfall games. If you like like Apex, I highly recommend this podcast. Appreciate that review, Not Ever Motion. Yeah, and thank you, Tykin, for your review. Uh, I think that's going to do it for the show this week. Andrew, stay safe out there, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Everyone, stay safe. Yeah. And uh, stay legendary. This is my favorite. My favorite.